Well, hello, my name is Robert Henderson, and uh, I've been in the ministry for like 35 years, actually 35 years plus. And I want to relate to you a particular happening occurrence that uh, happened in my life that was very dramatic. It, it affected me in a very dramatic way, actually for years after uh, the event occurred. Uh, I had a dream, and in this particular dream, I'm standing outside of a cave. And I'm just standing there, I'm aware that the cave is there, but all of a sudden I sense the presence of the Lord. And that's very important that I sensed Him. I didn't see anything, uh, there was no physical manifestation, but I just knew the presence of God was there. And as I'm standing there sensing His presence, the presence then went into a cave, went into the cave that I was standing next to. Now, because I was so hungry for His presence and His anointing, what I was actually pursuing Him for, because my heart in the dream was one of pursuit after the Lord, and His presence as it went into the cave, I pursued that presence into the cave. But as I went into the cave, all of a sudden the face of Jesus appeared to me. And it was like His face was hovering uh, in the atmosphere uh, between heaven and earth. It was hovering there. And when His face appeared to me, two mantles, I knew they were mantles, they were released from His face and they began to float toward me. And they were, they were silver and blue, uh, very shiny, very, uh, 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 you know, uh, very much alive, if you will, and they were floating toward me. And as they came to me, I grabbed the mantles and I wrapped them around my neck. And I knew that they were the mantles of spirit and of power. Now that's important because when Jesus was anointed, he was anointed with the, with the anointing of spirit and in power. The Apostle Paul actually spoke of that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, where he said that he had been anointed with spirit and with power. Well, when Jesus was anointed in the Jordan River, he was anointed with spirit. But we also know that when he went came out of the wilderness, he came out in the power of the spirit. So somewhere in the wilderness, Jesus received I believe a, a second anointing that that was the, was the anointing of power because when he came out of the wilderness, he began to do signs and wonders. So in other words, when, that, when those mantles came toward me, I knew they were the anointing of spirit and of power. And I knew that I had what I'd been pursuing the Lord for. I knew that. But then the face of Jesus kept going deeper into the cave. And so I kept pursuing him, even though I had what I'd originally been uh, pursuing him for, I kept going after him deeper into the cave. And as the face got deeper into the cave, suddenly the full bodily appearance of Jesus uh, uh, was, was known. I mean, I could see his, his face, I could see uh, his full body, his arms, his legs, everything. And, and I was still pursuing him. And as I caught up to where he was, because I was a little bit behind him, he stopped and he looked over his shoulder at me. And, and I was shocked at what came out of my mouth because what came out of my mouth was these words, Lord, what must I do to love you more? And without hesitation, as the Lord looked over his shoulder at me, he said to me, he said, separation. And, and I woke up from the dream. And when I woke up, the first thing that I was aware of was that God was, was wanting to separate me. Acts chapter 13, the Bible says that Saul and Barnabas were separated unto the work to which God had called them. And they actually were sent forth as apostles or apostolically. And I knew in my dream that there was an encounter with Jesus that was, that was meant to separate me unto the apostolic call that God uh, had on my life which is very important because one of, the, one of the characteristics of a real apostle, the Bible says, is that they have seen Jesus. Uh, I mean, in the early church, the, first, the original 12, which carried a, a, a whole other realm of apostolic ministry than, than what I believe we, we can carry because they actually were responsible for writing scripture and all, a lot of different things of that nature. But the bottom line was they had seen Jesus. And I think that many that have been called to function apostolically, they have a revelation of who Jesus is. And so as I was in my dream, when I sensed his presence, when I saw his face, but then I saw his full bodily form. I believe that I was seeing the Lord. And out of that, God was saying, I'm asking you to separate yourself. Now, the interesting thing about that was me and my family, we had 
a very secure situation. Uh, we had we had raised up a local house that we were leading uh, in Texas, uh, very strong in every sense of the word, including financially. And when the Lord said that to me, I was aware that God was asking me to separate myself from everything that I had security in, everything that I loved, everything that was dear to me, and if you will, to take a step of faith, maybe even a leap of faith, and began to move out into an apostolic ministry that would require travel and certain realms of uncertainty. But I knew that the Lord was asking me to do this. And so, so me and my wife, we discussed it, we prayed about it, and we said, Lord, we we love you. We want to obey you because his word to me was when I said, Lord, what must I do to love you more was was separation. And so we took the step and began to, to separate ourselves from everything we had built for 15 plus years. And we launched out in faith, believing that we were moving at the word of the Lord and everything was blessed. Everything was awesome. But the, but as we got further into the ministry, all of a sudden, I won't go into all the details, but all of a sudden, some very treacherous things began to happen. People began to come against us. People began to betray us. And we found ourselves very isolated. We found ourselves very alone. We found ourselves very separated. And that dream that I'd had where I was pursuing Jesus deeper and deeper and deeper into a cave began to occur. You see, Remember that Elijah, the Lord found him in a cave and said, what are you doing here in, in that particular situation? So many times caves are places of isolation. They're, they're places of, of maybe things that aren't quite as pleasant as we would like for them to be. They can be times of testing and times of trials that we go through. And me and my family, we walk through that situation. But here's what it did. As I walk through that, 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 that process of separation, it caused us to manifest and to fall more in love with Jesus. Because that was the question I asked him, Lord, what must I do to love you more? And it was because he was appearing to me in his, in, in his fullness, if you will, in his full bodily form. So here's what I wanna to say to you today. Maybe you just sense the presence of the Lord. I wanna encourage you, be willing to follow that presence. Be willing to pursue that presence. Maybe the face of the Lord is being made manifest to you. Maybe there's aspects of who He is that you're starting to see. Watch, receive from Him out of those places, just as I did. It was whenever I saw His face, as I sought His face, that literally the two mantles of spirit and of power that allowed me to function in the supernatural came to me. But then, that wasn't enough. I wanted an, a, a deeper, more intense relationship. And so as he went deeper into the cave, I pursued him. I went after him with every part of my life. I want to encourage you. Jesus wants to fully manifest himself. He wants to fully uh, uh, show who he is. And maybe his word to you will be different than his word to me. The word to me was separation. He said, I need for you to be willing to do this because I want to use you uh, in, a, in specific and particular ways. And as a result, uh, I feel of being uh, faithful and obedient to him, he's caused the blessing uh, to come upon me. He's caused realms of influence that I've been able to operate in. So let me pray for you today, okay? Father, I want to pray for all those that are watching that hunger and thirst for you. I want to thank you for the hunger and thirst that you have granted me in my heart all these years from the time I was just a 12 year old boy. But Lord, you've given me a heart to seek your face. You've given me a heart to pursue you. I wanna ask Lord, that those that are watching, that they would be willing to pursue your presence, Lord. Maybe they just sense your presence, that they would be willing to pursue you. And Lord, even as they do, that you would manifest your face to them. You would begin to unveil for them different aspects, different dimensions of who you are. Even, even Lord, your face being revealed to them. And Father, even as they, would, as they would move in that area, would you let the mantles of your presence, the mantles of your power, and the mantles of your spirit come upon them. And then Lord, but let them always desire, not just what you have, but who you are. And let them, I pray, continue to pursue you in every part of their being and unveil for them the fullness of who you are.
for the times and the seasons of your life, of their life, and what you have called them to do. I want to ask you for the very power and the presence of the Lord to be upon them. And the Lord, that when we would stand before you, that we would be able to stand with confidence and boldness, that we have done that which you have asked us to do. We thank you for it, Lord. And I give you praise, and I give you honor, and I give you glory for this. Lord, let the very power and presence of your anointing be upon your people, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, bless you guys. Thank you. I want to encourage you to pursue him with every part of your heart. He will unveil himself to you so that you might know him and fulfill all that he made you for for this life. Lord bless you.